For those of you that thought that the blog might have ended, the blog never ends, you guys. It's just the story of my life. Uh, but it has slowed down for very natural reasons because if you think back to the original point of the blog, this blog is meant to cover uh, noteworthy milestones in my music career. So I think it's a fairly natural trajectory that things kind of even out because like my first clinic tour, my first drum festival, did blogs on those. Um, but now when I do a clinic tour, it's not really new news or a festival of some sort. So I'm not covering things that I've done before. Um, so that's why the blogs are a little bit fewer and far between. But I'm very conscious of, of making them for, you know, the right things, the big things. And I'm here to announce that I have been growing my hair out, the beard, so I can finally audition for the role of Jesus in Jesus Christ Superstar. Just kidding. That's not what this blog's about. This blog is actually about our new band, Childish Japes. Childish Japes is a trio. It's me, Asher Kurtz, and Jed Lingat. And they're some of my favorite musicians and best friends. And we've been writing together at this point. It's the beginning of September 2017. We've been writing together for about a year. First we did the Roscoe the Wolf EP, which they, I asked them if they could just help me write some cool music for the Minel videos. That was the whole purpose of those songs. And the chemistry was just so beautiful that we were like, you guys want to start a band? Hey, hey you guys want to start a band together? Because we want to start a band? <laughs> Here we are. This is the story of us recording our first album. Jed. Yeah, this that might be a little too much fun, by the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I was gonna. I'm gonna try the other snare on this bad boy. Piccolo? Ah, piccolo.
double fifty. Shit's getting crazy. <laughs> getting crazy. Have you ever seen this shit before? <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Go for it. One, two, one, two, three. Now, what I didn't film any of, sadly, is any of the sessions with the singers. So, so we had auditioned several singers to be the the singer in the band, but it just didn't line up perfectly, and we didn't want to halt the project, so we thought, okay, we'll open the creative doors even wider, and we can just feature anyone and all of our favorite singers in New York. So that's what we did. That's why there's so many featured vocalists on the album, However, I just kind of dropped the ball at filming those sessions, so yeah, I don't have a lot. So just believe that it happened, and uh, here's some footage of Dave Vivas recording in his closet in L.A. When I reach into my pocket, go on the move, finally came up for breath, I found an old friend, remembered what you said, what? yeah. Rocking. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been working I'm, on this today? Total hours spent. Uh, you know. Situation. Two hours. Even though we're growing up, I'll never let you die. Take my hand, I hold you up, I won't leave you behind. Keep your childish eyes alive. Let Progress report. I can't figure it out, dude. What this blog doesn't uh, cover in footage is the myriad, seemingly infinite, weird little details that go into actually making this thing happen. Um, I feel like since this is, you know, my goal is to be an open window or an open book here, uh, I do want to talk about some of those things for a second because it might look like, oh, we got together. I don't know. We wrote some music. We put the album out. Here we are. You know, so it's not quite that easy. I mean, it kind of is, but there's a lot of other stuff that had to go on in the meantime. I mean, we started writing the album like, I guess like almost a year ago and it was finished like, like four or five months ago. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. So it, the album was finished four or five months ago. Um, and along that path, you know, the, the band started with us jamming. So we, we just had this awesome chemistry. Uh, there's a lot of mutual respect for each other as musicians in the band. And so all the songs on this first album were born from seeds that were created jamming. So I jammed with Azure one on one. We had a bunch of ideas. I set up to record in my rehearsal space. So I have like ghetto recordings of them all or iPhone recordings of them all. Same thing with Jed. Me and him would get together and, and just groove out. And then at some point, I had quite a long list of cool ideas. And we'd come together and be like, okay, let's see if we can, let's see which, one, which ones of these lend themselves to becoming songs. And we'd write you know, and, and, and just try and sort of piece things together and think, okay, now we need a B section, now we need a bridge or something like that. Some of them we had singers in mind immediately. We were like, oh man, you know, Joanna or Courtney would be perfect for this one. Um, some of them we thought would remain trio pieces, which did three of the songs in the album are just the three of us. 
and yeah, so so then we, you know we're piecing things together. We're thinking of singers we want to work with. Not all the singers live in New York. Dave's in LA. Uh, Courtney Swain's in Boston. So luckily for us, everyone was super excited to be a part of the project. Um, I think, and, and interestingly, enough, interestingly enough, the main reason for that was that there were just no boundaries creatively for this project, and there still aren't. That's kind of the whole point. Um, like album to album, we will be trying vastly different musical ideas and approaches, and that's totally okay. So a lot of the singers and, and people who were involved in the project in general were really excited by the fact that it, it's kind of an anything goes, things you wanted to try. You're not trying to fit into a certain box or a genre box of any type. Um, so that was really cool. And people were super stoked, and so they were sending ideas back and forth. We had people come here to work on the songs with us, writing sessions in the meantime, um, book the studio session, you know, rehearsing plenty for those. Um, you saw a bunch of footage from the studio, that's cool. Um, but then you leave the studio and you have a bunch of, you know, cool tracks and takes of different songs. Um, that's where Drew of the Drew comes in, who was the producer of the album. He was helping us out with cool ideas in the studio, playing a pretty traditional producer role, actually, which was quite cool. To just be there, listening, offering ideas, you know. I remember at one point he was like, okay, like, this is the point in the song where I get bored. So let's figure out how we can evolve this or develop it in a way that, you know, avoids that unfortunate situation. Um, so yeah, and then it, it was just like starting to schedule sessions with Drew to first pick takes. There were any edits, which, uh, you know, proudly, there were very few. We didn't, we didn't chop things up a lot. I mean, there are moments that are sloppier. Uh, there are moments that are super tight. It's all meant to like feel like it's real life, because it is. Um, and then starting to mix, starting to produce, and then getting the, the singers in from their various locations to record over the next little while, and all the while trying to think about how we're going to release the album. Um, and for a band that's essentially a, uh, a nobody, um, that's just the big mystery in the music industry. You know, how do you go from being nobody to being somebody? And hopefully, <clears throat> I mean, Coincidentally, this blog might also e expose that trail, that path for us, um, if we become somebody. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so, so, you know, a lot of friends, a lot of different bands that, that are in my immediate network have different ideas about, you know, oh, you want blogs to premiere it or online publications to premiere your song so that you get more traffic to it. Um, the big thing right now in 2017 is getting your song on playlists, uh, on Spotify and stuff, like curated playlists, so that a lot more people hear it. Um, but it's all sort of like, it costs money to do PR, of which there is not a bottomless well in, in at least my career in the music industry. Um, so yeah, it was interesting. We, we decided to release three singles leading up to the album. The first one, Modern Drummer, uh, was kind enough to premiere the first single, which was really cool. You know, my first idea with the band is I want to let the drum community know that I have a band. You know, if you've heard of my drumming before or you know or like what I do, um, I, I want to make sure that no one falls through the cracks, that everyone knows that this band exists as a sort of musical embodiment of, of what I do on the drums. So that was sort of phase one, but we don't want to just be a drummer band. If you've heard the if you've heard the music, it's really not particularly drum heavy. There's not drum solos and like you know drum wankery left and right. We're just trying to make good and interesting music that you know we think is good and is interesting to the listener as well as us to play. So, so yeah, we reached out a drum community, and then honestly, I just didn't have the funds or like time and energy to find proper PR for the next two singles. So we just self-released those. We pushed them as hard as we could. We put some, you know, money behind Facebook ads in all transparency here. And uh, then we put the album out also with no PR and just, you know, pushed it as hard as we could to, to everyone that we thought might like it. And it's been cool. The only thing that really like surprised us and was quite fortunate is that 
somehow the song from Joanna, the song that Joanna did called Insight, found its way onto some Spotify playlist and got like 20,000 more uh, streams than most of the other songs, like the other singles that we released or whatnot. So it did make a significant difference. It became very clear to me then. I was like, okay, playlists do make a big difference because that just, in the Spotify and Apple Music algorithmic system that they've got going on, it's a pretty clever system. So if a lot of people are hearing your song, you're more likely to come up with new songs that you put out in their, in their release radar or whatever it's called. It's all kind of new to me, but it sounds like, yeah, the better you do, the better you do, if that makes sense. So uh, we were very lucky for that uh, first thing, but it's not like a make or break thing. It's not like the band is famous now because we got on the playlist. But yeah, and then the Modern Drummer publication was also super helpful because it, they obviously just have a huge reach, so a lot of people heard about that first single. And yeah, so we're just, you know, kind of, I'm, this is my first, you know, try at real band management in a sense, so we're just kind of testing the waters and uh, trying things out. But yeah, and then you get into booking shows, and you get into doing the artwork, and you get into making, you know, artwork and promo for the shows, blah, blah, blah. It's just a lot of details. Um, just way more details than you can ever expect. You know, it's like that with any big project. You're like, yeah, yeah I think it should be pretty easy. And then you, you're like a month away, and it's just like, where did all this shit come from? I did not see this coming. You know, one of the goals of the band going forward, and you can sort of hold me to this since this is, a, this is sort of a time capsule here, is for us to have a lot of high output um, because we, the, what I'm finding, you know, as I'm doing this, is there's so many details that you could potentially get totally bogged down with, with you know, finding the right way to release it and the right PR company to work with. And I'm sure that's all important, but the mentality I have, especially since this is really a passion project, more than some, you know, shot to become super famous, is uh, that if we keep putting out good stuff and we put out a lot of good stuff that some of the stuff's gonna kinda take off and some of it'll be more accessible and that people will appreciate going on the journey with us. <clears throat> because it's kind of an anything goes project, you know. The whole idea with Childish Japes, Childish Jokes, a Jape is a joke, is that it, it's, it's a creative safe space. So there's no idea too weird, there's no idea too unlike our previous ideas, you know. We just wanna be able to have a place where, where we can just be shamelessly unabashedly creative um, and this is the, the place to do that so we're gonna keep making stuff and putting it out you know I'd love to put out another album at least one album before a year is up maybe two you know we've got an idea for a trio album as well as an album we're doing with Dave Vivas so anyways that's that Childish Japes first album BAM <laughs> thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching this blog and rock on Oh, <laughs>